Hey, it's Chris Caddo from Putney Breeze Business Advisors, and we're here to show you how to create your competitive advantage with a FileMaker custom app. Now, if you watched the last video, where we finished on was showing you how to create an ERD, uh, a simple ERD. Now, what we're going to do in this video is literally create the tables and the fields, or the entities and the attributes that we discuss in the ERD video. We're going to literally show you how to do this in FileMaker. Recapping, we came up with four tables uh, because we are going to go on holiday. And remember, we're creating a little simple travel app here uh, as an example of how quickly we can potentially create an app for yourself. So we're going to go on holidays, which are, which are what I've called trips. In the holidays, we have uh, a number of days. Within the days, we've got certain documents, depending on what we're doing on the day, travel vouchers, holiday tickets, uh, hotel tickets, tour coupons, whatever it might be. And we're going to take lots of photos. So... When we step into FileMaker and we create our new application, remember that we just go into File, New Solution, and just type away. So File, New Solution, and literally just call it what you like. What we've done is we've typed in My Travel App, and we've saved, and it's brought about this page here, which is literally saying, hey, there's there's one layout that's been created based on what we called what we called our new app, My Travel App. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step into File, Manage, Database. And that will open up this table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the entities that we discussed. Uh, and how do we do that? It's actually clearly, well, it's going to be really simple. So we're just going to click on the Create button. Nope, sorry. We're just going to call it what we want to call it first because we can't recreate a, a table that we've already created or the same name. So what do we need? We need my trips. And remember... My trips are holidays. You know, trips is a commonly used term in Australia for if you go on a trip, you're going on a holiday. So my trips, I'm going to create my trips. What else do we need? Well, we need an itinerary. Create. Uh, what else do we need? We need some documents. So we need a table of our documents and we need a table of our happy snaps. Happy snaps, happy snaps photos, perhaps let's call it. Just to make it really clear, just in case I'm confusing people with my funny English. Anyway, so we've created the tables. Now, what we do, do we need to do next? Well, we need to actually step in and create the fields. Now, automatically, as you, as you toggle from uh, one tab to the other. Now, because I was on happy snaps, and happy snaps was highlighted in the tables uh, window, when I click over to the fields window, what it shows me is that I'm creating fields for Happy Snaps. So what, do, what should we do first? Now let's just do My Trips. Now what are we going to call our trips? So we go to Fields. Remember, I've clicked out of Fields and now it's My Trips. What do we need? The first thing that you need when creating your attributes, which is the fields, is you need an ID. So I'm going to create ID for My Trips because every single trip needs to have an identifier. And this doesn't matter what kind of record that you're creating. Now, with every, every field, you can choose what kind of field it's going to be. So it can be a number, text, which can be a combination of number and text, uh, date, time, timestamp, container, which holds your documents, calculations, which is literally what it is, and summary is, in effect, a summary of other fields that you can highlight that might be in the table. We'll show you though how that all works uh, later on. But for the purposes of this example, we're going to choose number, and we're going to create, and then we're going to click into options. So in options, we can actually auto enter data uh, as we create new fields. And because this is an ID field, what we want to do is we want to check on the serial box. And we're going to say, we're just going to start on a value one and increment by one. But as you can see here, FileMaker allows you to have auto enter for many things. So you can have auto enter for creation. It could be date. It could be the person who created it. Uh, it could be a name of the person. It could be... Um, it could be a timestamp, as you can see, and the same can be done for modification. But what we're going to do here is just serial number. You can see here that you can auto enter data, you can create calculations straight away or look up straight away, or you can prohibit people entering values. But for now, let's just make it a serial number. So we just need a serial number. So what else do we need? We need a trip name. We need to call it something, and we're going to make that a text field because it's going to be words. Then when are we going to go on this trip? So we need a trip start date. And that's going to be a date. 
Uh, we also need a trip end date because we want to know when we're going to start this trip and when we're going to end this trip. Then we also will probably need, depending on how we want to set up our user interface, but let's say we want to we want to have the year and the month and uh, are separated. So let's let's call this year, and this is actually going to be a calculation, and we're going to create that. And then it takes us, when we do create calculations, it creates us to a calculation dialog box. Now there's a number of custom functions that are built into, or well, a number of functions that are built into FileMaker, and one of them is year. So what we're actually going to do is basically we're going to say, let's tell us what year it is, what year, so that fx means it's going to be a function. And in the date, we're going to trip pick trip start date. So what it's going to do there is it's going to look at the trip start date, and it's going to bring back just a year. So let's do that. Let's also do what we're at. Let's also do month and create its calculation. We've got another straight out of the box calculation here. Month. We're going to pick start date as well. And what else do we need? Now, thinking ahead, what we'll actually need uh, later on for when we create itineraries from the trips. So this is this is going to be the layout, or this is going to be the table where we assign the trips. But from here, what we'll do is we'll create an itinerary. So what else are we going to need? Now thinking ahead, from this table, from the information in this table, what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to actually create itineraries. And what's the itinerary? Well, the itinerary is going to be the number of days on your trip because the itinerary is a list of days. So for that calculation to work, we're going to have to know for our, each new trip that we create how many days we're going to be away or how many days it involves. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another calculation and we're going to use this calculation in the script later on. We're going to call it days. And what we need to do is we need to take the end date and we need to subtract the start date. And that what that will do is that will work out the number of days there are that we're going to have in our trip. And we'll use that later on. So here we are. What we've done here is we've created the attributes for the first table, which is my trips. Now we can toggle across and go to itinerary and create the details for itinerary. Now we won't create every single field right now, but we will just just to bed down the basics. What we're going to do is we're just going to put in we're just going to basically create the key items that you need just to get started. And let's have a think about this. All right, so we're going to have an itinerary. We're going to create the itinerary ID. And when we create the itinerary ID, we're going to call it, going to give it a serial number. It's going to be generated on creation. And it's going to start with the value of 1 and increment by 1 each time. Great. Now, what do we also need in here? Well, this is a new thing that you're going to come across. We're going to, we're going to need a foreign key. So I'm just going to click FK. And it's going to be foreign key my trips. Now, what does that actually mean? I'm just going to make it a text for now. What does that actually mean? Well, we're going to use this in the relationship diagram when I show you in a minute, because basically this is the one-to-many relationship, because in each trip, there's going to be many days, and the days what we're calling uh, within the itinerary. So therefore, the one-to-many relationship is, is the trips, my trips, to the itinerary, which has many, and we're going to have to make that link as we go along. So what else do we need in in the itinerary potentially? Uh, we might need the location that we're at. Well, what do we want to know on that day? So we might need the location. Uh, we also might need the actual day itself. So let's create a date field. We actually might need, let's say, understanding what we're doing, where we're traveling. Maybe we want to know what airline we're traveling on on that day. Uh, let's just do that for now. Now we might change these later on, but let's just have a look at where we're going. We might not want to know what airport it is that we're going to go to. We might want to understand the hotel that we're going to stay at. So let's let's just call this the accommodation for now. And we might want to know the address, accommodation address. And we also might want to know the accommodation city or state. Or country. How about that? We all might also might want to know. We might also want to know. Let's say the check-in time for the hotel. Let's just make that a text field for now. And in the itinerary, we might actually have a travel budget. So what might we do in the travel budget? Well, we might actually say things like, okay, so what are we going to spend at the bar? And we're going to make that a number. 
what are we going to do? well let's say food obviously it's something we need to eat uh, then um, there might be some taxis then there may also be some uh, what else might we have taxis we might actually have some food oh we might buy some gifts how about that how about some shopping shopping what else might we do we might have a massage how about that hey let's have a massage let's have a regular massage and let's just say that that's let's just say that that's that's fine but if we're going to have a budget for each day then we're going to need a total spend and let's if we have a total spend for the day what we're going to do is we're going to create another calculation and what's this calculation going to be? This calculation is going to be how much we spend at the bar, plus how much we spend on food, plus how much we spend on taxis, plus how much we spend on shopping, plus how much we spend on massages. How about that? Okay, so that's our that's our travel spend for the day. We might also have a budget field. So we're going to say for each particular day, we're going to have a budget number. And then we're going to have the, the difference, if it's if it's good or bad, as in terms of our spend for the day versus the budget. So how is that going to work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, we're going to say this is the, let's call it the budget variance. The budget variance, it's a very accounting way of saying things, isn't it? It's going to be a number. We're going to, oh, no, it isn't. Sorry, let me change that. I'm just going to click on budget variance again. We're going to call it, we're going to make it a calculation. And what is this calculation going to be? Well, this but, but calculation is going to be, Let's change that. Yes, okay. We're going to say that it's the budget minus the total spent. So that's going to tell us, that's going to give us a number for whether we're above or below our budget. And we're going to use that later on in our, in our calculations or in, in how we lay out the fields and tables and so on. What else might we have in here? Let's just have a think about this. Is there anything... Uh, maybe we might have our flight number. Let's not forget our flight number. Make that text because it can be both alphanumeric. It's got, um, I've spelt that wrong, so I've just stepped back into it. I'm just going to take away one of the, and just press change. Perhaps that will do for now. Perhaps that will do for now. In documents, what we're going to need to do is do the same thing here, which is ID document and we're going to make that a number we're going to create that and then we're going to go to click into options again make it a serial on creation with the next value starting at one to next value incrementing by one so that's our id done then we're going to have a foreign key and again why do we have a foreign key here we're going to have a foreign key for itinerary and oops spell that wrong and we're going to make that we'll just make it I'll make it a text how about we make it a text let's make it a text and um, what we're going to do is going to create that and why because there are potentially many documents in any one particular day then we're going to actually have something which holds the documents itself so we're going to call this the document how about that and we're going to call that we're going to make that a container and that's what's going to hold our documents last one is our happy snaps now happy snaps are our photos to do that, we need our Happy Snaps ID. Oh, I've got to usually start with the ID first, don't I? It helps to have the ID first because when you do a sort later on and you want to find some of your some of your fields, uh, you can sort it by alphabetical order and it's easier to find. So we're going to Happy Snaps, we're going to give it a text, we're going to create that, and then we're going to, again, step into Options, Serial Number, on Creation, start at one increment by one then what else do we need we need perhaps we want to have some we want to have some notes don't we, we want to have some happy we want happy snap notes next to me text uh what else are we going to have oh well, we probably want the date don't we of when we actually took the photo date and let's make this a timestamp. how about that create and you know what let's create a let's create a timestamp on creation so that we know exactly when we actually took it we're gonna need a we're gonna need the photo itself so let's create a photo but what's the photo gonna be the photo is gonna be a calculate a container field 
So let's create a container field. The last field we probably need here is the foreign key. And the foreign key for itinerary. And the foreign key for itinerary is going to be a text field. We're going to create that. And what we're going to do in the options here, though, is that we're going to go to the, to the instead of going to the audio, we're going to go to storage. And we're going to, so we're going to index so that we can, it just helps with our lookups later on because there's going to be lots of photos. So here we are. So here we are. We've created all our fields, oh sorry, all our tables, which are our entities. Remember back here, which are our entities. We've got the trips, itinerary documents, and happy snap photos. And what we've done is that we've created our trips, itinerary documents, and happy snap photos. We've gone in and we've now gone and created the first basic attributes, which are in effect the fields for each of our new tables. And now what we need to do is we actually need to create the relationships. So in here, what we have here is the relationship diagram. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And what we're going to do is that we're going to match up the one-to-many relationship. So in the trip ID, we're going to have a trip ID and we're going to match it up with the foreign key of my trips. And in from itinerary, we're going to have many documents. What we're also going to have though is many photos. So we're just going to grab the the itinerary ID again and we're going to go to foreign key. So what do we have now? If we just have a look at this, we've in effect created what we had in our lucid charts, right? So this is now oh I think it was the other way around, wasn't it? We had documents up here, we had happy snaps down here. So this is in effect the relationship diagram, the ERD that's now being created or replicated in FileMaker. So here it is. We've created the tables and we've created the fields. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create the layouts and start building it out. Because now that we've got the tables and the fields, we can really start to create something. Remember, we're here to help you create your competitive advantage. Comment, like, ask some questions if you like, and um, I'm happy to answer them. Stay tuned for the next video where we start to create some layouts. See you then.